Okay, this is a quick video just to show how we quickly process fungal mycelial samples for DNA extraction. So we'll just use, we'll, we'll grow the cultures in uh, 10, 10 mils of complete medium for seven days. Um, this is a single spore culture. And then we'll just uh, reach in with a pair of sterilized forceps and grab the mycelial ball and any hangers on us in there and put them onto paper towel to block them. And then we will move on to the next sample after we've completed this. Um, we keep um, beakers of sterilized forceps on hand so that we don't have to keep on flaming forceps in between each use. It just allows us to process the samples a lot more quickly. So just dump out the extra liquid into a container that will be autoclaved, block the mycelial pellet, and then move on to the next one. I'll try and recover all the mycelium that's in the tube. Typically one of these mycelial balls will yield three or four micrograms of DNA, which is plenty for just about any processing that we're going to do later on. PCR, of course, we can do hundreds of PCRs, maybe thousands. We can generate um, libraries for um, Illumina sequencing or nanopore sequencing. We get a lot of DNA. Very rarely do we have to resort to doing large-scale DNA probes. So we'll just let those blot on the paper towels until they, the towels have soaked up a fair bit of liquid. And then we will transfer each pellet to a fresh towel just to get the remaining pieces of liquid out. So once we're done with those, we can then transfer these to a new towel. Give them, we can give them a little bit of a pat to squeeze some of the liquid out if we want to speed up the process. course if we didn't want to um, use up so many pairs of forceps we could just leave these mycelial pads on there for a little bit longer to absorb quicker and then the final step is to block them from the top surface just to squeeze out any remaining remaining droplets so we're going to keep this towel so we can keep track of the numbers of each sample. We can grab some additional towels, fold them into quarters, and then we will place these over the tops of these, and we can squeeze these from the top also, just to really get them as dry as possible. Of course, if we wish to, we could store each of the pipettes in the rack so that we could go back to the same pi uh, pipette, oh, sorry, the same force pair of forceps for the same culture. But I'm not worried about using up forceps here because we've got plenty on hand. And then when they're dry, we can then start transferring them to their respective tubes. I'm just going to cap these very loosely because we're going to freeze dry them and we want the moisture to be able to escape from the 
on the tube. Of course, I've got all my tubes labeled correctly before I started to make the process more efficient and less prone to making errors. Okay, and then we're done. Just like I say, we're just gonna put the tubes on very, very lightly. Next thing to do is to, of course, mop up any spills. This will get treated with ethanol to um, sterilize the surface before washing. But next step is to put the, these tubes into the freeze dryer. So I'll just grab a freeze dryer flask. These will all get stacked into the freeze dryer flask. In fact, I'm going to remove the, the tops to make sure that they can dry out properly. So each of these is going to just get stacked in the bottom. Like so. And then one very final uh, and important step is to place some towels in the top like this so that when we release the air back into the freeze dryer, the massive flow that happens within the um, tube doesn't go directly down into the tubes and force the mycelium, uh, the mycelial pellets out uh, where we'll no longer know which samples are which. So this typically works to stop them from blowing around when we reintroduce the air. So we're just gonna seal this up like so, put on the neck. This will get placed in the minus 20 freezer for a few hours to freeze the pellets before they go into the freeze dryer.